Today, we're talking about protein, perhaps the most important macronutrient. When we talk about macronutrients, there are four. There's protein, there's carbohydrates, there's fat, and there's also alcohol sugar. Commonly, we just talk about the first three. Alcohol sugar is found in alcohol, and it's also found in some things as a sweetening agent. Why protein may be the most important macronutrient is first and foremost because it helps us maintain a healthy body composition. It helps us maintain low body fat while at the same time having muscle. It helps us rebuild tissue, helps us repair things like skin, nails, and hair, but also our muscle tissue after workouts. So when you're dieting, protein is very important so that you maintain muscle tissue. If you're bulking, protein is very important because it helps us build muscle tissue. The other important factor about protein is that it's satiating and it is very filling. So when you have foods that are protein, they're going to help you feel full. Also, protein is a really good guide because junk food has carbohydrates, it has fat, but it does not typically have protein in it. So if you're eating protein, you're probably making better food choices in general. That's why it's great to have a protein goal. The other thing about protein is that it's thermogenic. What do I mean by that? If you do not utilize protein to build muscle or to repair skin, nails, hair, tissue, your body has to go through a process known as gluconeogenesis in order to convert protein to glucose. So by that effect, it actually burns some of the calories of the protein itself up while your body processes it. So for those four reasons, that one, first and foremost, that protein helps us rebuild and repair from workouts, two, that it's satiating, three, that it helps us guide our decisions by having that protein goal, and four, that it's thermogenic, protein may be the most important macronutrient. Having established how important protein is in your diet, let's set your protein goal. Before we even talk about it, if you have a prior health condition that causes protein to be dangerous to your kidneys or something else going on in your body, obviously I'm not qualified to help you calculate your protein goal. Talk to your doctor. But those are rare occasions. Most of the people that are hyping up that protein is gonna cause kidney damage or things like that, you have to have an excessive amount of protein to cause that issue. So as long as you're healthy, let's calculate your protein goal. Considerations we're gonna look at. Do you know your body fat? Are you active? Do you have any digestive issues? So first of all, do we know your body fat? In an ideal world, we would have that number and therefore we would know how much lean mass you have on your body. If that's the case, we would be having one gram of protein for every pound of lean muscle mass on your body. If you don't know your body fat, it's okay. We're gonna take a generic recommendation of 0.8 times your body weight in protein. And all of this is assuming that you are very active, that you're working out at least four hours a week in the gym, maybe more, that you're trying to build muscle, that you're trying to lose fat, that you want a healthy body composition, and that you are, are very active. When we consider a protein goal, remember, think of it as a floor, meaning that's the minimum amount of protein you should have. So that 0.8 times your body weight, or that one gram of protein per pound of lean muscle mass, that's the minimum. It's okay to have more. Again, you would have to have an excessive amount of protein for it to be harmful. We're talking like more than two times your body weight day over day for protein to ever be harmful as long as you're a healthy adult. In those cases, again, one gram of protein per pound of lean muscle mass, if you know it, and if you don't, take 0.8 times your body weight. If you're slightly less active or you tend to have digestive issues when you have a lot of protein, you get constipated, lower that number down to 0.6 times your body weight. But I would start at 0.8 and then based on how your body responds, if you're having digestive issues, move it down to 0.6. So first you wanna think about the total amount of protein in your diet, and then we wanna to start to break down protein throughout our day. And the reason that you have multiple meals of protein throughout a day is because your body does not have a mechanism to store protein. We all know, unfortunately, that our body has a mechanism for storing fat, but our body can also store carbohydrates. When you have carbohydrates, depending on the source, breaks down to glucose, breaks down to sucrose, breaks down to fructose, lactose, then it is converted into glycogen and that glycogen is either stored in the muscle cell for energy or it's stored in the liver. When it comes to protein, what happens with protein is we either utilize it to build new tissue or repair present tissue, or it goes through that process that I already talked to you about, gluconeogenesis, where the protein literally converts to glucose. So your body doesn't have a mechanism to store protein. 
It's safe to say that protein will last in your system with somewhere between two and six hours, depending on what you've ate. Even a recent study came out and it showed that protein could last as long as 10 hours in your system. But there's a lot of factors involved with that and you should still break up protein throughout the day in order to maintain that body composition that you want and to build new muscle. Eating frequent meals will not fuel your metabolism. You will not burn more calories. The reason that we're having this protein throughout the day is because we want to maintain muscle tissue and we want the capacity to build new muscle tissue. So my recommendation to you, slightly controversial, is to have at least four meals a day. The reason I say that's controversial is once upon a time they were like, eat six times a day, you need protein every two hours. That's not necessary. I've ate as many as five meals a day before, which I'd have like a breakfast, I'd have like a little like mid-morning snack, I'd have my lunch, I'd have like a three, four o'clock meal, and then I'd have a dinner. I presently only eat four meals a day and I really enjoy this. I only have to think about it every four hours. It's, you know, I get to have like a larger portion size at each meal. Either of those work. Four or five meals a day is ideal for maintaining and building muscle. Again, five's not necessary, but either of those, they're great choices. But again, optimally, you wanna be having protein approximately every four hours. Now we're talking about protein sources. This is the fun part. Let's start with lean protein. I truly believe that lean protein, meaning sources of protein that have less than 10 grams or four grams of saturated fat total is the foundation of a diet. Because when you start a diet and you're trying to hit that protein goal, you're gonna really struggle to keep your calories low while getting your protein high. Everybody has that struggle, it's universal. And over time you'll get better at it, but that's why we wanna really rely on lean protein. I like chicken thighs, they're a little fattier, than traditional chicken, but my test with all this protein is does it have at least 10 grams of protein per 100 calories? So let's just use this, we'll give two examples. I have ground turkey, this is 23 grams of protein, add a zero to that, does this have 230 calories or less? It does. This has 140 calories, 23 grams of protein, so this passes the test. Chicken thighs, this is 24 grams of protein, does it have 240 calories or less? It does, it has 170 calories. This passes the test. These are lean protein sources. I prefer the chicken thighs over chicken breasts because they just taste better and I do want some saturated fat in my diet. I'll talk about that later, but I do want some saturated fat in my diet. I also like my ground turkey to be right around 93, 94, six. I don't like it super lean, like 99, one, because it just tastes horrible. It's just so dry. So getting something that's right around like that 90, 10, but still passing the test, that's where you want your ground turkey or your ground chicken to be. Any kind of ground meat, even ground beef, same thing applies. Talking about a little bit of fattier meat here, because we do want some saturated fat in your diet. You want about 10% of your calories coming from saturated fat. I wouldn't be too obsessive over calculating that number, because if you are eating animal protein like I am, you will achieve that. This is ground bison, 190 calories, 23 grams of protein. Amazing, I love this for burgers. Grass-fed ribeye. People inherently think that beef is fattier than poultry. That's not the case, it just depends on the cut. Uh, I like this grass-fed ribeye because it's particularly lean. It still passes the test, a lot of ribeye does not. Tenderloin is very lean. You want uh, strip loin is very lean. You want a leaner cut of meat. This ribeye, 180 calories, 23 grams of protein. That's why I get grass fed because normally ribeye is a very, very fatty meat. Over here to the fish. Okay, perhaps one of the most crucial things to have in your diet, salmon. I'm gonna give you some other options if you don't like salmon, but we love salmon because it is chock full. Look at these fillets, oh my God. I cannot wait to have these for dinner. We love salmon because again, it passes the test, but it's also loaded with omega-3s, which are so important for your diet. So I would really highly suggest that you have at least two servings of salmon a week. If you can't stomach salmon, I know, and anchovies, you might be like, Jake, I don't like salmon or anchovies, but I love this on a little salad. I think it tastes incredible. I'll make like an arugula salad or a spinach salad, throw it on top extremely high in omega-3s. Another option for you, smoked oysters. I got these at Trader Joe's. Again, you can throw these on a salad. You can just eat them as is. All three of these very high in omega-3 fatty acids. You wanna get saturated fat. You wanna get omega-3s in your diet. Another protein source. I try to have three whole eggs every single day in my diet. 
I also love egg whites. If I have eggs, I'll have three whole eggs and I'll have it with a cup of egg whites. That gets me to 40 grams of protein. It passes the test. It gets my protein where I want it to be while keeping my calories down. So having eggs crucial to your diet uh, and egg whites, even though a lot of people, whenever I talk about egg whites, people are like, egg whites are horrible, have the yolk. Egg whites are very important to keeping your calories low. So eggs, lean protein, some form of beef, and some form of protein with omega-3s because the only way you can get DHEA and EPA, the form of omega-3s is through fish, are all the foundation of my diet. Those four foods or those four sources of protein, I incorporate at least weekly into my diet. Something that is a little less necessary, but I still have all the time just out of convenience is dairy. I love Siggy's, it's Icelandic yogurt. You could also have Greek yogurt. Again, your guiding light here is, does it pass the test? This is 120 calories, 18 grams of protein. Remember, just take the protein number, 18 grams of protein, add a zero to it, does it have 180 calories or less? I have both vanilla here and I have plain, there's a little bit of sugar in this, you're gonna be fine guys. So a little bit of sugar in your diet, it's not gonna kill you, literally. Cottage cheese, I love good culture. I think it just has a great taste. I think it's really all about the texture when it comes to this. There's other cottage cheeses, obviously, and they're perfectly fine, but my preference is good culture. It just has a nice firm taste. It's not watery, it's not mushy. I really like it. These Chobanis, these are literally Greek yogurt, like pre-made shakes. I think these things are fire because the calories, 170 calories, 20 grams of protein with three grams of fiber. You do want to get the berry flavors in order to get this. There's like a, um, a cookies and cream or an Oreo flavor, whatever. Uh, it doesn't have fiber. There's a vanilla one, doesn't have fiber. So this to me, same amount of calories, same amount of protein. This is a no brainer because it also has the fiber on top of it. Last thing to talk about, people shit on supplements this day and age. They talk about bad about whey protein. It's silly. If you're really struggling to keep your calories down and get your protein high, I think of this as like a training wheel. It's a great place to start and a great way to learn how to hit your protein goal while keeping your calories down. Uh, I love PD Science because it's great for Ninja Creamies. It's great for recipes. It's a casein uh, whey blend. You don't need like hydrolyzed whey. Uh, it's unnecessary. You don't need to be able to be absorbed that quickly. This is perfectly fine and it tastes incredible. I also have casein powder. Promix did send this to me. They gave it to me for free. Um, and I use casein, especially when I'm in a bulk, for before I go to bed because it's slow so slow digesting. That example I gave about like uh, protein being able to digest over 10 hours, that was done in a study with casein. It actually showed that casein, 100 grams of casein, lasted in a people's system for up to 10 hours. So this is great to take before bed as like a little bedtime treat, or maybe to have it on top of dinner, like a scoop of that, so that you have a slow digesting protein throughout the night. Protein bars, uh, Quest is great. Everybody loves Bear Bell. Built, I've always loved Built. Legendary Pop-Tarts. There's nothing wrong with using a protein bar. Uh, it's gonna be a great source of fiber and an excellent source of protein. Again, just make sure that it passes the test. And lastly, I like all the spicy flavors of Quest chips. These I think are awesome. I'll put these on the side with like a burger. I'll have like a five ounce burger, like a bison burger. And then I'll put these Quest chips on the side to help me get to like that 40, 50 gram protein spot. I really like these in particular. I think they're excellent. And that is all things protein. We talked about protein as a macronutrient. We talked about calculating your protein goal, how you need to break it up throughout the day. And most importantly, we talked about protein sources. If you like what you saw, hit subscribe. If you don't already follow me on Instagram, that's where the majority of my following is. I post stories every single day, multiple times, along with posts. We also put shorts here up on YouTube daily and release one long format YouTube each week. Guys, thanks for tuning in. I appreciate all the support.